So, warmly welcome and um, delighted to have you here. Thank you, thank you, Anna, for, for the nice introduction. I, I think all of you know me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to introduce myself. Still, uh, I'm from the uh, Department of History, University of Delhi, India. Uh, where I finished my doctoral thesis on uh, the history of circus and circus performances in 20th century Kerala last year. I was defending my thesis in November last 26th. So, this talk is based on uh, my doctor thesis, Jimbos and Jabbing Turtles, A Social History of uh, Circus in India. Let me begin with an autobiographical note. <laughs> it's, uh, I come from a small town called Talasheri, and uh, now I'm here speaking to you uh, as part of SAS. Uh, it's the academy, uh, even the education, which I have again enabled me to uh, kind of come and uh, to, um, be part of Sassanet and be in Zoom. Likewise, my predecessors who have been uh, a group of them who chose circus as their profession have been kind of going to, uh, uh, traveling all over the world and taking up, you know, uh, they're becoming superstars in uh, many of the European and American circuses. So, I'm going to uh, try to tell a story of my own about their uh, their travel, uh, how they chose the uh, service as a profession, and what actually prompted them to choose it, and who were part of who were part of uh, circus in India, who all were part of uh, circus in India. What were the technologies? What uh, what were the uh, labor unions? Uh, labor struggles? They were kind of uh, uh, what were the labor struggles that, that was going on? I'm a little bit tense, so <laughs> 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 so, oh my god, you know me. <laughs> so let me just, uh, I, I have brought a map uh, which I really want to show. I know everybody's, uh, everybody know uh, which part I need to talk about. Kerala, this is the southern tip of, this is a map of India. Uh, you can see uh, Kerala here in the southern tip. Kerala state uh, was formed in 1956, uh, 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 combining uh, three territorial units, Malabar, Travancore and Cochin, and this is the time with which I plan to begin my talk. Let me go uh, directly to 1955, where a group of uh, uh, famous writers, journalists, and actors from the erstwhile princely state of Travancore in the southern, uh, so, uh, in the south, made a trip to uh, the northern part, Malabar, northern state, Mal Malabar. The times were chaotic, especially because of the fact that uh, you know, in spite of uh, 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 the three uh, uh, regions, Travancore, Cochin, and Malabar, where uh, had the uh, linguistic, were being united. Uh, on the basis of linguistic uh, you know, language and culture, they were actually different. Uh, they were actually following different cultures. They were actually different uh, regions. Uh, in this context, a trip made by the southern luminaries would definitely be read as an instance of treading into the unknown. The travelogue. Malabar Le Ethinotum, a peep into Malabar, written by one of them, K. Balakrishnan, renowned writer and editor, they bear such anxieties and predicaments. Let's uh, uh, have a peep into uh, uh, the defining dilemma in, uh, from Balakrishnan's text. The editor, he, he was the editor in, uh, of uh, the famous uh, comedy weekly. The following incident happens while a group was uh, staying. Uh, this group was staying at the home of the eminent short story writer Patatrula Karnagaran in Kolikoda, uh, one of the major towns in Malabar. I quote: "The next morning, we saw a strange figure at the veranda of the neighboring house. A beautiful girl of about 18 years, in bright green skirt and blouse, stretching forward with her hands held high above, uh, with a firm grip on the block above the door." She slowly lifted from the ground, 
hanging onto the hands and then came down, bending backwards like a ballerina. She must not have seen us. For us, such a performance on the veranda was weird and we right away came to, uh, came to the conclusion that the house is indecent and the girl is licentious. Watching the circus? We heard our host asking. Then only we realized it was a circus camp. The girl was reminding us that Malabar tops the circus rings in India as if the dynamism in the circus arena follows her everywhere in life. Unquote. The angst, uh, angst of the feminine, feminine other in this me me masculine tourist thief is clearly obvious. But what comes next is also interesting, like uh, for the conflict resolution, circus and Malabar, which is you know, the, the problem of uh, a female body in performance, uh, it comes to be so solved when uh, cir circus and Malabar uh, comes to be associated. Unlike the other two regions that went into the making of Kerala, Malabar had been under direct British rule. Talasheri town in North Malabar was a major trade point and also the judicial center of the British administration. Talasheri still figures in the post-colonial imaginary as a showpiece of the colonial heritage. The walls of many restaurants in Talasheri proudly displays the image of three seas, cricket, cake, and circus, and the bearers would be more than happy to introduce you uh, about its glorious past. Popular representations and common sense have always let this imaginary flourish. Generations have grow, grown amidst this fable, and I am no exception. I'm, actually, this is what uh, brought me into this research. When I started knowing and kind of uh, uh, understanding the lives of uh, circus people, my student life in the English uh, language and uh, literature department in Kannur University has a lot to do with uh, how I came to be came to uh, uh, research on the services in India. Actually, I, uh, I was doing MPhil in uh, we have a course called MPhil, which is in between uh, masters and uh, PhD, which is supposed to introduce you to research methodology and things like that. So I was doing that course in uh, Kannur University in the English Language and Literature Department. I used to reach the early end. Uh, the only company then were the super women, sweeper, sweepers. So I naturally tied friendship with them and I was talking, uh, we were quite friendly. One of them was a circus artist, who, she was a retired circus artist. And uh, one day she stopped coming and I came to know that she was uh, dismissed from the job. So uh, I went to her house and met her, and she told me that uh, this uh, university, uh, uh, Kerala State Employment Exchange has come up with a new rule that uh, 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 the university sweeper should have at least eight standard education. So uh, she had only two or three years of, uh, she's gone to school only for two or three years. And that was the case with uh, uh, many other women uh, with whom I kind of uh, uh, came into con contact via her. So that is how I kind of, uh, I, I began to think that uh, 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 these people, uh, 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 circus people, when uh, they come back home from circuses, they are kind of becoming uh, outside the mainstream educational system or mainstream mainstream system, or mainstream I should say. Well, when I started realizing that the town and especially the places around campus were pulsating with the circus people, far from the mythical tales about the origin of circus, Melur, Andalur, Kaumbhagam, Dharmadam, Chirakuni, Vadakumbadal and Kadiru, they were all actually throbbing with the circus, uh, circus lives. Hundreds of men and women have, have been going to the tents around the country in various capacities for decades. Artists, ring boys, trainers, technicians, and entrepreneurs. What I've tried to do is to explore some key moments and aspects in the different aspects of uh, uh, circus in this part of the world, spanning over 100 years. I will not be pondering over the linear chronological narrative or sequential order of first or origins or fathers, also because I came 
uh, to came uh, to this research why are they fossil fuels women uh, because of well, not just because of a critical understanding but because of this as well many a time I've got responses from outside the circus community such as why don't you choose something for uh, something serious for a doctoral study but uh, when I when I went to Delhi University and uh, Many of, many, many of my peer groups, uh, when I was talking to uh, many of my peer groups, they were like, wow, what a wonderful subject, but is there any circus left now? Uh, many of them even uh, asked me, like, uh, many of them were kind of uh, uh, forgetting the fact that cinema is being kind of, uh, researched in excess, that uh, you know, um, circus is circuses of uh, recent origin. Well, if you look at the history of cinema and circus, we can see that you know it's cinema is also uh, also has only that much of history. An accidental run was run this was and chat with an old scholar in Nehru Memorial Museum and Library uh, four years before actually uh, will make you will be an example of the dilemmas I'm trying to kind of put forth. I met this scholar. There was a there was an exhibition that was going on in, in a moment uh, on uh, Nehru as statesman, and uh, I was sitting in Kuti Scandi actually, and uh, this guy came, uh, this person came, and uh, he must be in his uh, late seventies, sat in, uh, uh, sat beside me, and uh, we started to um, uh, talk about it. So uh, he was asking what I was doing, and I was telling him um, research on circus. So he told me that, uh, of course, um, uh, this is a wonderful subject, and yeah, you kind of, uh, uh, they should be, the problems of circus community should be brought before uh, in, uh, the mainstream. Then he kind of asked me the crucial query in what way does your research enrich knowledge? Circus in the subcontinent is deeply embedded with the arrival of the modern, the recasting and the remaking of gender hierarchies the transformation of physical cultures, bodies and performances, the expansion of itinerant entertainment, the emergence of new trans-regional and transcultural spaces, the interventions of the colonial and the post-colonial states of nature, humans and environment, and the development of various technologies. I'm sure this idea of the, uh, um, uh, the, around the protection of knowledge will have satisfied the skeptic in that old scholar. Shahid Amin, who is from my department. Uh, uh, he's the only person who hasn't left the department. <laughs> All the other historians are kind of leaving the department. We, uh, Shahid Shah has returned, right? Uh, I think he'll, he'll return in six months or so. Yeah. Yeah. Shahid Amin, who is an uh, eminent historian and one of the pro proponents of uh, uh, Sabatin studies, points out uh, in a lecture walking in the dark of archives, that if Sabatins do not figure in the official archives, it could only mean that those ar archives exist outside. But while attempting a history of circus in this part of the world, the major challenge one faces is not only the absence of state archival sources, but also non-stated so uh, sources like uh, uh, autobiographies, diaries, memoirs, uh, or even personal histories. It might be interesting to note here that numerous life stories, biographies, and historical works have become on uh, circuses in Australia, Britain, uh, uh, Africa, uh, United States, and Europe, of course. In the Indian subcontinent, Kerala and Maharashtra have rich past uh, in circus acrobatics, animal training, and entrepreneurship, but books on circus are very rare, even though Kerala boasts of being one of the vibrant print cultures, <laughs> supplemented by 100% literacy. Uh, well, the books uh, uh, on a circus in Malayalam are written by those persons from within the circus community, mainly. While popular culture, body, performance, and marginal communities are being widely studied in the university departments, and in fact, cinema is being written about and exists Circus remains a properly unexplored area. On the, on the other hand, circus does figure exactly in the common sense as an awful exploitative realm with uh, primitive labor relations and extremely dangerous working conditions. 
We shall bear in mind here that the majority of the circus people are from the lower caste, uh, and uh, lower classes. Before moving on to my chapters, let me briefly explain what would come uh, under the uh, tent of the term circus and what will not. A variety of people and communities with physical uh, performances. Uh, yeah. You can see uh, uh, Tara Bai, uh, who, who has been performing, who has been, who has been uh, famous as the Indian Lady Sando. This is from Bombay Chronicle, uh, March 2nd, uh, 1914. She, has also, uh, she, she, uh, she, she had a circus of her own, Tara Bai Circus, which is uh, actually from, uh, from Maharashtra. And uh, this lady was also doing performances outside uh, circus like uh, uh, pulling the train with her hair mm -hmm. or uh, something like Ramamurti has been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there were uh, performances like that as well. A variety of people and communities with physical uh, performances and or animal acts as their vocation have always existed in places and times we are discussing. We know one cannot miss such fears and actions in our present day to day life in the street corners in rail coaches or in one's doorsteps. I have not either attempted to place them in a grand lineage of pre-circus or assimilate them into an expansive category of maybe street circus or something like that. Uh, but we must understand that many performers neither call their acts circus or uh, nor themselves as circus performers even today when it is supposed to have become a generic term. In fact, some of them consider define their act as beyond service. Now, uh, in my work, I, in my doctoral thesis, I have uh, uh, four chapters, which, what is that? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have four chapters. Uh, one is on uh, the history of circus acrobatics in Malabar. Uh, in which I looked at uh, what uh, formed the structure of circus acrobatics in Malaga. In the second chapter, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, how, what were the state policies and attitudes that brought animals into circus. In the third chapter, I'm looking at uh, what were the multi multilateral exchanges that was happening around tent, uh, significant article in circus, uh, were the British officials using it, uh, what were the other entertainment tents were, was uh, the tent being used uh, in other entertainment practices. Those were my inquiries. In the uh, fourth chapter, I mainly focused at the labor struggles, where what uh, what was the history of uh, uh, the trade unions. We we can see that uh, 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 in labor histories are coming up, or uh, uh, histories of trade unions are being written, but we seldom find a circus. Trade union. Uh, the circus acrobatics in Malabar aims to locate the ways in which colonial modernity and indigenous traditions constitute the structure of circus acrobatics in this part, part of the world. I've explored how different physical cultures come together in this process by looking at the circus calories. This is a circus calorie. Uh, uh, this is the only uh, existing circus kalari now. Uh, what is it? Can you explain what a kalari is? Uh, definitely. I mean, I, I, that's what I'm going to do. I was uh, maybe I should uh, show. Uh, uh, technology is like you. Know.
this is actually the uh, considered to be the
Malabar, Travancore and Cochin, and this is the time with which I plan to begin my talk. Let me go uh, directly to 1955, where a group of uh, uh, famous writers, journalists and actors from the erstwhile princely state of Travancore in the southern, uh, so, uh, in the south made a trip to uh, the northern part, Malabar, northern state, Mal Malabar. The times were chaotic, especially because of the fact that, uh, you know, in spite of uh, 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 the three uh, uh, regions, Travancore, Cochin and Malabar, where uh, had the uh, linguistic, were being united uh, on the basis of linguistic uh, you know, language and culture, they were actually different, uh, they were actually following different cultures, they were actually different uh, regions. Uh, in this context, a trip made by the southern luminaries would definitely be read as an instance of treading into the unknown. The travelogue, Malabar Le Ethinotum, a peep into Malabar, written by one of them, K. Balakrishnan, renowned writer and editor, lay back such anxieties and predicaments. Let's uh, uh, have a peep into uh, uh, the defining dilemma in, uh, from Balakrishnan's text. The editor, he, he was the editor uh, of uh, the famous uh, comedy weekly. The following incident happens while a group was uh, staying. Uh, this group was staying at the home of the eminent short story writer Patatula Karnagaran in Kore Kore, uh, one of the major towns in Malabar. I quote: The next morning, we saw a strange figure at the veranda of the neighboring house. A beautiful girl of about 18 years in bright green skirt and blouse, stretching forward with her hands held high above, uh, with a firm grip on the block above the door. She slowly lifted from the ground, hanging onto the hands, and then came down, bending backwards like a ballerina. She must not have seen us. For us, such a performance on the veranda was weird, and we right away came to, uh, came to the conclusion that the house is indecent and the girl is licentious. Watching the circus, we heard our host asking. Then only we realized it was a circus camp. The girl was reminding us that Malabar tops the circus rings in India, as if the dynamism in the circus arena follows her everywhere in life. Unquote. The angst, uh, angst of the feminine, feminine other in this masculine tourist peep is clearly obvious. But what comes next is also interesting, like right? uh, for the conflict resolution, circus and Malabar, which is you know, the, the problem of uh, a female body in performance, uh, it comes to be so solved when uh, cir circus and Malabar uh, comes to be associated. Unlike the other two regions that went into the making of Kerala, Malabar had been under direct British rule. Talasheri town in North Malabar was a major trade point and also the judicial center of the British administration. Talasheri still figures in the post-colonial imaginary as a showpiece of the colonial heritage. The walls of many restaurants in Talasheri proudly displays the image of three seas, cricket, cake, and circus, and the bearers would be more than happy to introduce you uh, about its glorious past. Popular representations and common sense have always let this imaginary flourish. Generations have grown amidst this fable, and I am no exception. Actually, this is what brought me into this research. When I started knowing and kind of understanding the lives of circus people. My student life in the English language and uh, a literature department in Kanyar University has a lot to do with uh, how I came to be came to uh, uh, research on the services in India. Actually, I, uh, I was doing MPhil and uh, we have a course called MPhil, which is in between uh, masters and uh, PhD, which is supposed to introduce you to research methodology and things like that. So I was doing that course in uh, Kanyar University in the English language and literature department. I used to reach the early end, uh, the only company then were the super women, sweeper, sweepers. So I naturally tied friendship with them and I was talking, uh, we were quite friendly. One of them was a circus artist, who, she was a retired circus artist. 
And uh, one day she stopped coming and I came to know that she was uh, dismissed from the job. So uh, I went to her house and met her and she told me that uh, this uh, university, uh, uh, Kerala State Employment Exchange has come up with a new rule that uh, 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 the university sweeper should have at least eight standard education. So uh, she had only two or three years of, uh, she's gone to school only for two or three years. And that was the case with uh, uh, many other women with whom I kind of uh, uh, came into con contact via her. So that is how I kind of, uh, I, I began to think that uh, 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 these people, uh, 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 circus people, when uh, they come back home from circuses, they are kind of becoming uh, outside the mainstream educational system or mainstream, uh, mainstream system. Mainstream, I should say. Well, when I started realizing that the town and especially the places around campus were pulsating with the circus people, far from the mythical tales about the origin of circus, Melur, Andalur, Kaum Bhagam, Dharmadam, Chirakuni, Vadakumbadu, and Kadiru, they were all actually throbbing with the circus, uh, circus lives. Hundreds of men and women have, had been going to the tents around the country in various capacities for decades. Artists, ring boys, trainers, technicians, and entrepreneurs. What I've tried to do is to explore some key moments and aspects in the different aspects of uh, uh, circus in this part of the world, spanning over a hundred years. I will not be pondering over the linear chronological narrative or so, so sequential order of firsts or origins or fathers, also because I came uh, uh, to came uh, to this research via the Fosse Coast women, uh, because of well, not just because of a critical understanding, but because of this as well. Many a time, I've got responses from outside the circus community, such as, "Why don't you choose something for uh, something serious for a doctoral study?" But when I when I went to Delhi University and uh, Many of, many, many of my peer groups, uh, when I was talking to uh, many of my peer groups, they were like, wow, what a wonderful subject, but is there any circus left now? Uh, many of them even uh, asked me, like, uh, many of them were kind of uh, uh, forgetting the fact that cinema is being kind of, uh, researched in excess, that uh, you know, um, circus is circuses of uh, recent origin. Like, well, uh, if you look at the history of cinema and circus, you can see that you know it's cinema is also uh, also has only that much of history. An accidental rend was rendez was and chat with an old scholar in Nehru Memorial Museum and Library uh, four years before actually uh, will make you will be an example of the dilemmas I'm trying to kind of put forth. I met this scholar. There was a there was an exhibition that was going on in in a moment uh, on uh, Nehru as statesman, and uh, I was sitting in Kuti's candy actually, and uh, this guy came. Uh, this person came, and uh, he must be in his uh, late seventies. Sat in, uh, uh, sat beside me, and uh, we started to um, uh, talk about it. So uh, he was asking what I was doing, and I was telling him um, research on circus. So he told me that, uh, of course, um, uh, this is a wonderful subject, and yeah, you kind of, uh, uh, they should be the problems of circus community should be brought before uh, in, uh, the mainstream. Then he kind of asked me the crucial query: In what way does your research enrich knowledge? Circus in the subcontinent is deeply embedded with the arrival of the modern, the recasting and the remaking of gender hierarchies. The transformation of physical cultures, bodies, and performances, the expansion of itinerant entertainment, the emergence of new trans regional and transcultural spaces, the interventions of the colonial and the post colonial states of nature, humans, and environment, and the development of various technologies. I'm sure this idea of the, uh, uh, the, around the protection of knowledge would have satisfied the skeptic in that old scholar. Shahid Amin, who is from my department, 
Uh, he's the only person who hasn't left the department. <laughs> All the other historians are kind of leaving the department. We, uh, Shadi has returned, right? Uh, I think he will return in six months or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shahid Amin, who is an uh, eminent historian and one of the pro uh, proponents of uh, uh, Sabatin studies, points out uh, in a lecture, walking in a type of archives, that if Sabatins do not figure in the official archives, it could only mean that those ar archives exist outside. But while attempting a history of circus in this part of the world, the major challenge one faces is not only the absence of state archival sources, but also non-stated so uh, sources like uh, uh, autobiographies, diaries, memoirs, uh, or even personal histories. It might be interesting to note here that Numerous, numerous life stories, biographies, and historical works have been coming on uh, circuses in Australia, Britain, uh, uh, Africa, uh, United States, and Europe, of course. In the Indian subcontinent, Kerala and Maharashtra have rich past uh, in circus acrobatics, animal training, and entrepreneurship, but books on circus are very rare, even though Kerala boasts of being one of the vibrant print cultures, <laughs> supplemented by 100% literacy. Uh, well, the books uh, uh, on a circus in Malayalam are written by those persons from within the circus community, mainly. While popular culture, body, performance, and marginal communities are being widely studied in university departments, and in fact, cinema is being written about and exists Circus remains a totally unexplored area. On the, on the other hand, circus does figure exaltedly in the common sense as an awful exploitative realm with uh, primitive labor relations and extremely dangerous working conditions. We shall bear in mind here that the majority of the circus people are from the lower caste. Uh, and uh, lower classes. Before moving on to my chapters, let me briefly explain what would come uh, under the uh, tent of the term circus and what will not. A variety of people and communities with physical uh, performances. Uh, You can see uh, uh, Tara Bai, uh, who, who has been performing, who has been, who has been uh, famous as the Indian Lady Sandow. This is from Bombay Chronicle, uh, March 2nd, uh, 19, 1940. She, has also, uh, she, she, uh, she, she had a circus of her own, Tara Bai Circus, which is uh, actually from, uh, from Maharashtra. And uh, this lady was also doing performances outside uh, circus like uh, uh, pulling the train with her hair mm. or uh, something like Ramamurti has been doing. Uh, so th there were uh, performances like that as well. A variety of people and communities with physical uh, performances and or animal acts as their vocation have always existed in places and times we are discussing. We know one cannot miss such fears and actions in our present day with their life in the street corners, in rail coaches, or in one's doorsteps. I have not either attempted to place them in a grand lineage of pre-circus or assimilate them into an expansive category of maybe street circus or something like that. Uh, but we must understand that many performers neither call their act circus or uh, nor themselves as circus performers even today when it is supposed to have become a generic term. In fact, some of them consider, define their act as beyond service. 
Now, uh, uh, in my work, uh, I, in my doctoral thesis, I have uh, uh, four chapters, which, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I have four chapters. Uh, one is on uh, the history of circus acrobatics in Malabar, uh, in which I looked at uh, what uh, formed the structure of circus acrobatics in Malabar. In the second chapter, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, how, what were the state policies and attitudes that brought animals into circus. In the third chapter, I've been looking at uh, what were the multi multilateral exchanges that was happening around tent, uh, significant article in circus, uh, were the British officials using it, uh, what were the other entertainment tents, uh, was uh, the tent being used uh, in other entertainment practices, those were my inquiries. In the uh, fourth chapter, I mainly focused at the labor struggles where, what, uh, what was the history of uh, uh, the trade unions. We, we can see that uh, 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 in labor histories are coming up, or uh, uh, histories of trade unions are being written, but we seldom find a circus trade union. Uh, the circus acrobatics in Malabar aims to locate the ways in which colonial modernity and indigenous traditions constitute the structure of circus acrobatics in this part of the world. I've explored how different physical cultures come together in this process by looking at the circus calories. This is a circus calorie. Uh, uh, this is the only uh, existing circus calorie now. Uh, which is, is, do you explain what a calorie is? Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I was, uh, maybe I should uh, show. Uh, uh, technology is like, you know. Uh, this is actually the uh, considered to be the. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. The traditional action, which is supposed to be carried out on as an action, martial arts, Culture uh, of a rigid caste based physical culture like Kaladi Payette were reimagined and refashioned as to accommodate a modern form, and the circus Kaladi became a spatial, a social space where different castes, caste, uh, communities, and genders could come together. This does not figure in any colonial, nationalist, or subaltern historical narratives of resistance or, or reform in Malabar or Kerala goes without saying. So the combination of the word circus kalari, as Zerili explains, circus has its root in uh, Latin, which means uh, kirkos, circle, or the ring, while kalari, as Zerili explains, Philip Zerili's, when body becomes all eyes, uh, originates from the Tamil column. He says, I quote, it derives from the Tamil column, meaning 
arena, area for dramatic, gladiatorial or gymnastic exhibitions, assembly or place of work or business. In Malayalam, Kalari also automatically refers to the special place where martial exercises are taught. Unquote. But the Ma uh, Malayalam word also refers to any side of learning, especially writing. Probably, the compound word contains elements of performance, exhibition, acrobatics, and also the obvious merging of the modern uh, and the traditional or indigenous tradition. Well, let's go back to the 19th and uh, 20th century Malabar, which is notorious for its caste discrimination. Stringent and uh, a stringent spatial and physical distance, even to the extent of seeing, was practiced to maintain the purity of caste Hindus. Distancing was enforced according to the position each caste ascribed in the hierarchy. Udayabhumar notes, I quote, the movement of the body in public spaces was regulated through a system of distance pollution. The sacredness of the space and the purity of the body being dependent on restrictions of access to other bodies in terms of visibility, touch, hearing, and clearly specified distances, unquote. The tension and the struggle uh, for power and authority existed, especially between the immediate upper caste and its lower caste. Though Thiyas and their immediate upper caste, Nayas, practiced Kaldi Paiti, the practice was seen as the ancestral and community occupation of Nayas. Nayas were established soldiers and chieftains of kings and royal families. In spite of the fact that Thiyas also were uh, supreme practitioners of Paiti, and had an unavoidable presence in the military of the ruler, they were not allowed in military practices. It should be noted here that, like the popular Naya Brigade of Travancore, there were three the regiments formed by the French and the British governments in Mahi and Talasheri, to less known. But this claim over this physical culture by the Nayas was unquestionable since the caste occupation of Thiyas was supposed to be tadi tapping. On the other hand, exceptionally talented Thiya Kaldipaiti practitioners were given the title Chegon Chegon. And each local ruler had his own army by the Chegopara. But despite all these, the Chegons were lined up for combats and duels, representing the dominant in disputes. In short, they were mercenaries to fight and die for the dominant, protecting their life and property. The caste discrimination and belittlement towards these practitioners cannot be more pronouncing. Murpoth Kumara, social reformer and thinker, in his unfinished autobiography, written in the form of a letter addressed to his eldest son, Murpoth Kunyapa, is definitely displeased at this cock and pull story that might have started cropping up during that time. I quote, the recent notion that Kalari Paiti is exclusively for Hindus in general, and Nayas in particular, is wrong. Let's not forget that there were great Kalari Paiti practitioners and non mapilas and Thiyas. You must know that even today, the great guru of Kalari Paiti, North Malabar, is the very old, respected Kotekatara Kanaran Gurikal, the Thiya, unquote. Though almost all caste groups performed Kalari Paiti, there were certain criteria to be followed in the case of the lower caste. There were calories for different caste groups, such as the Naya calories, Tiya calories, Pulaya calories, and Kaniya calories, and also the Muslim and the Christian calories. So, at that time, a space where all castes were welcome and all uh, caste distinct bodies could interact freely and intimately was somewhat impossible to imagine. So Kiliri Kunikaran teacher, who was, the, uh, who was a Kalari Pai Tegurikal, was a Kalari Pai Tegurikal, uh, exa did exactly this. Uh, he, uh, uh, Kiliri's passion for the form and his decision to establish a training center to disseminate might uh, have a more radical reckoning to it. He must have not found in this modern uh, uh, I mean, he must have found in this modern, assorted physical culture circles uh, an egalitarian space of the bodies of different castes and genders. The daring choices he made in his private life stand testimony to his constant seeking out for a better world, better, an equal world. Clearly, he was born into the air caste, uh, but he did not believe in the caste system and married from the lower, uh, uh, lower caste and joined the Brahma Samaja. 
1903 Malayala, Malayala Manorama reports that those who joined uh, Brahma Samaja will be declared outcast by the Tiya Sabha. But the brutal caste masters could not subdue the spirit of being like Giriri. He converted to Christianity and remained so until his death on uh, September 22, 1939, at the age of 81. Natur Pitar Madarin notes sharply in his memoirs uh, that Kiriri, I quote, selected pupils from the underprivileged families stigmatized as untouchables. The Circus Kalvi, you can see another photo. Yeah, this is this is also from the Circus Kalvi. This are the this is from the other circus Kalari, uh, uh, which was established in the 1940s. Uh, there were three Kalaris, to my knowledge, which was uh, uh, established in this uh, in this uh, in uh, Chirakara and Talasheri areas, uh, which was one was by uh, obviously by Kilari Nikandan teacher, and uh, uh, another Kalari was started in Kannur, which was. Uh, 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 established uh, around 1937, which was run as a family uh, uh, circus colony where, uh, 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 you know, uh, family members were uh, Mannan, who was again a famous artist and uh, disciple of Kiri Kunikana teacher, who uh, run it as a fa family enterprise. And uh, the one uh, we have seen, uh, which, was, uh, uh, which was established by M.K. Raman, who was also a superstar artist uh, and the disciple of Hilary Kunikanan teacher. The circus colony was built at, well, Hilary Kunikanan teacher's circus colony was built in uh, Chirakara in Talacheri, adjoining his home. A notice published as part of the endeavor to revive this colony in 1949 states that the uh, year of the establishment is 1888. But there are other scholars who uh, uh, contest this opinion and say that it was established in 1901. Almost all, all the items such as horizontal bar, varma chattam, frog, trapeze, rock dance, weightlifting, rings, food juggling, hole and wire items were performed in the, in the circus colony. While except uh, clowning and items uh, uh, then ordered with animals. Whatever knowledge and training Kiliri had gained in the field of circus acrobatics had the flavors of many cultures and styles. He learned Kaladi piety, wrestling, gymnastics, and weightlifting. He was also into games such as cricket, which had been popular in the colonial town. He underwent gymnastic training in Madras for a year under the Field Games Association. Medavadi of 1940, newspaper published from Malabar, notes that uh, after gaining expertise in indigenous physical sports such as, I quote, Muchan, Otta, Petuari, Toti, Muravu, Kundapaite, unquote, he traveled to Madras, Mysore, Trichy, and Madura and found teachers there to fulfill his learning. I quote, he has also become skilled at Punjabi wrestling and foreign practices such as Chedi, Bana, Lajir, and Shangri Bhutta. He has been teaching all these to people in his native land. This again from Midavadi. Kiliri joined the Basel Evangelical Mission School at Talasheri uh, as a gymnastic teacher in 1884. He also taught horizontal and parallel bars and the Swedish drill. Circus acrobatics in the Indian subcontinent uh, is a complex and uh, act uh, different sorts of bodily acts and performances merge. Different regions and cultures come mm -hmm. together. There were uh, other circus galleries uh, which I have already mentioned. So I'll show you a few photographs there. Uh, I don't know what happened to the order. Uh, this is uh, uh, a photograph of uh, Kanan Bombayo, who was uh, again uh, a disciple of Kiliri uh, uh, Kanan teacher, who bought trains in. Uh, his circus colony, who left for Europe in 1928 uh, uh, at the age of 22 uh, to uh, become a, uh, a superstar artist. His, the item in performance you can see, it's a rock dance. He married um, an Italian woman who was also an artist. Another, and uh, this is from the Hagenbeck Palace uh, German circus. He perf performed in front of Hitler 
and it is said that uh, he, uh, Hitler was calling him with his mouth again uh, the jumping devil of India, which was kind of, you know, but uh, along, with, <laughs> um, uh, along with this idea of uh, Aryan supremacy, it's, it, the, there are also tales circulating among the, among the circus community that his shoe soles were uh, tested, examined, uh, whether he was actually doing it or not. Well, uh, this is a letter dated uh, 1936. Which was uh, uh, which was addressed to Kiliri uh, uh, which was sent by an uh, uh, artist who got trained from the circus gallery. You can see uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a late photo. So you can see maybe now women are uh, uh, in 1920s and 30s was a time where uh, I mean 1930s and 40s were a time where women outnumbered men in Indian services. Uh, uh, you have already seen how Kanan Bombay has been uh, reaching uh, Europe or you know, uh, else the, the world uh, outside. There were also artists who were coming in. Uh, this is Gloria Van der Wielen, who was uh, who is from Belgium. And he set, she settled with her family and her two brothers. Uh, she settled uh, in Tharacheri for uh, 30 years. She, she, had, she has been working in various uh, Indian services. This one? No, no, no. No. Uh, in swing. Yeah. yeah. That one. And the, my second chapter deals with animals. Uh, well, engaging with the lives of animals have always been problematic with humanities and social sciences. Contemporary social history recognizes the position of animals as analogous with uh, marginal uh, subaltern groups who are underrepresented. Uh, people like Swan, Sandra Swart argues uh, the first step uh, 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 drawing on the gender, or uh, let me quote, drawing on the gender and women's history paradigm. But as historians, first step would be simply to demonstrate that if animals have a history at all. And we should explore how, I quote again, how social history can be enriched by focusing on the history from an animal perspective. And equally, how the tools provided by the social history reveals the historicity of animals. Unquote. That animals who are a minority in every sense hardly figure, even in the histories of wildlife, environment, and livelihood in India, is not at all surprising in this scenario. Animals in circus brings to the fore a culture of animal training, uh, taming, and human accompaniment. This also raises significant questions regarding their acquisition, captive life, exhibition, breeding, and changing relation to forests and wilderness over the period. My attempt here would be to look at these issues within the context of various interventions by the colonial and the post-colonial states in the name of protection and conservation and its emblematic institution, the zoo. The first section deals with the ban of uh, wild animals in circus, seizure of animals, and consequent legal battle between the state and the circus people. In the second section, I'll be looking at the state policies, animal trade, and the ideas of exotic and exhibition. In the last section, I shall explore the tradition of animal training in surface by looking at oral and written narratives. Through these, I try to examine how the idea of conservation itself becomes hypocritical and the different standards of the state and civil society while propagating the binary ideas of cruelty and mercy in the case of animals. Well, on uh, 2nd March 1991, the Environment Ministry of uh, Government of India Banned, issued an order uh, based on the 1960 Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, banning the training and performance of bears, monkeys, panthers, and dogs. It's interesting that dogs come in, but later on, dog, dogs were removed from the list and lines were added. You can see their conservation, how they are uh, 
concerned about conservation and um, concern for wild animals. But many cases were filed by circus companies and courts around the country against the seizure of animals and seeking compensation from the government. The central uh, argument of the petition was that, I quote from the petition, there are more than 3,500 animals who are involved and participating in the exhibition of circus shown in various parts of the country. And the notification arbitrarily threatens the livelihood of around 40,000 animal trainers, caretakers, handlers, <coughs> and performers carrying on their trade, occupation, art, profession for nearly 109 years. Unquote. In the legal battle that lasted over a decade, the Delhi and the uh, uh, Kerala High Courts and finally the Supreme Court of India dismissed the petitions. The most significant observation came from the Supreme, uh, High Court of India dismissing the petitioner's plea. The division bench asked if humans have a, uh, are entitled to the rights, why not animals? Unquote. The ban, fateful in the lives of thousands of circus artists and workers roaming around the country, has become a significant moment in the collective memory of the community. Even those who had retired from the trade long back will start telling about uh, 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 telling about uh, telling something about its aftermath when they talk about their life stories. Soon after, the zoo authorities around the country were instructed to raid circuses and take away the animals to specified five shelters across the country. This is a table uh, published by uh, the Central Zoo Authority of India. You can see animals, uh, the number of animals, lions and tigers especially, uh, uh, they received from uh, the circuses around the country. You can see the five uh, zoos, uh, state on the zoos, which were uh, becoming uh, rescue, rescue shelters for animals. Uh, Various animal rights NGOs gave a helping hand in the raids. Immediately after the ban, uh, the, uh, the notification was issued that the zoo authorities around the country uh, should uh, raid surfaces and take away the animals to specify five shelters across the country. Uh, various animal rights NGOs gave a helping hand in this and strengthened the campaigns against surfaces, posting reports, requests. Uh, widely on the internet. Ironically, numerous cases were reported where these rescued animals were made to starve and suffer, travel long distances only to end up in already crammed zoos. Animal Defenders International and NGO records that the government rescue shelters were not in capacity with the exceeding number of animals collected from circuses. A news report describes the circus animals in the rescue center at Tirupati Sri Venkateshara Zoo as a caste system where the circus animals, I quote, survives in jam-packed same-sex cages, fed but not cared for, denied population rights, objects of pity that is mixed with content, unquote. The report further adds that the circus animals, which are mostly hybrid, are not considered as wildlife and the wildlife laws do not allow sex between hybrid and pure breeds. It must be noted here that most of the animals in circuses are actually pro procured through dealings with the zoos and private parties and other markets. So, I quote, an unknown percentage of animals classified as capt captive bred in circuses were actually bred in other private facilities, including the zoos. The stock records of the Trivandrum uh, Zoo and the archival records at the state archive Trivandrum shows that exchanges of animals between circus parties and zoos were quite common. H. Hediger observes in his seminal work the psychology and behavior of animals in zoos and circuses that, I quote, circus animal is, as it were, never alone. In the zoo, on the contrary, each keeper is responsible for a large area maintaining animals. He has little or no time to devote to separate, individu to separate individuals. Consequently, the intimacy of the circus between man and animal is seldom possible. 
This is significant when the state uh, and animal rights NGOs construct and delegitimize a circus as the other of zoos, sanctuaries and national parks, preserve forests. Uh, circus is always portrayed as the other of all these state-owned uh, places where animals are uh, rescued or protected. In the legal battle that ensued from the ban, this intimacy has not ever been talked about. Neither by the petitioners who raised the problem of the li livelihood of uh, uh, animal trainers and keepers, nor by NGOs or state or uh, any other bodies. There was no effort from the part of the ministry that banned the circus animals to rehabilitate the trainers, keepers along with the animals. Nor did, did they find it necessary to give any compensation to the animal trainers or their assistants. Meena Radhashna points out in her what she called uh, her article, what she calls civil societies and civil acts, how Kalanta community's livelihood was shattered followed, uh, following the ban on their traditional occupation of bear dancing. These instances point out how those who argue for proscriptions seldom pay any attention to the rehabilitation of the lives of animals and humans caught in the game. In the early circus companies established by minorities, human performers had, a, had, a, had an important role. This is uh, pig, which is uh, domestic animal. She is uh, called Fearless Madhavi. She was an animal trainer. She's from Dalasheri, who has been working in this uh, uh, circus, Kamala Circus. We don't have many uh, big circuses in India. I mean, uh, big in the sense, you know, we have we had uh, six, we had a single, a double, uh, uh, pole circuses uh, and. Uh, Circuses with three, uh, four poles, six poles, and eight poles. And the Kamala Three Ring Circus is uh, uh, supposed to be the only three ring circus we have, which was considered to be the largest in Asia and second largest in the world. You can see how tiger cubs are roaming around, you know, just as dogs or many cats. You can see the lion cubs these women are carrying. It's a part of the 1950s, which I don't want to comment. Krishnan and a gorilla. Krishnan was uh, the gorilla trainer, and Radha Kannan, who with whom, uh, from whom I collected this image, was telling me that when they are in performance, he won't understand who is gorilla and who is Krishna. It's, it was that kind of a. Uh, Relationship they had. Shagarin, uh, Shagarin lost. He was a uh, he was a domestic animal trainer. Yeah, and you know elephants are considered domestic in India. Uh, he lost one of his legs during his uh, animal training processes, and he was he had to leave this. This is a chimpanzee cub, which is uh, no, it's, 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 it's from 1990s, and you can see how they are carrying it. It's uh, the intimacy, intimacy and mm -hmm. kind of thing, as if a kid, you know. It's, uh, yeah, so. uh, this is again from Kamala Circus. Uh, the program book of Kamala Circus, uh, which was published in 1955, openly says that uh, about uh, 20 elephants died an untimely death while they were actually being um, transported. Uh, Damu Dotre and uh, Sonia. Damu Dotre is uh, uh, a Marathi animal trainer who, uh, who was very, very popular in uh, Ringling Brothers. He, uh, his, uh, he has written an autobiography called The Wild Animal Man. The interesting fact is uh, that he has dedicated it to Sonia, the most beautiful of them all. Like, you know, and uh, he says that uh, she's an animal which is, you know, kind of, uh, uh, which the rarest of the animal uh, he has ever encountered. The interesting fact is that many of the animal trainers, uh, if you read uh, their autobiographies, Gunda Gabriel Williams or uh, uh, Lamo Dothra is autobiographical. They consider their animals as individuals. 
they're not speech as we social scientists or historians or you know uh, or the state might consider as this tigers lions or you know kind of bears they consider as you know this is raja and this is or somebody as with individualistic character which is very uh, crap you can see this uh, letter which is uh, which is with an animal you can see many of the letter uh, i've collected uh, i i have a, I have a bundle of letters with me which is uh, from 1950s onwards and uh, you can see this uh, tiger tigers uh, gorillas this is a this is a notice which is published in early uh, 20th century and you can see that uh, uh, the the it, it's it's written in bold letters, you know, like uh, uh, a Bengal tiger. Kannan is uh, performing with a Bengal tiger, which is which is as uh, 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 which is low, which has twelve feet. Twelve feet. Yeah, twelve feet. Mm -hmm. So horrible English. Sorry about the horrible English. It gets more fragmented when I'm speaking in public, and. Uh, this is Shikar Khana. This is what I'm going to speak about. In the early circus companies established by the Marathis, human performers had very lesser role compared to their animal counterparts. This could have been uh, because many of the circus owners of early uh, Maratha circus companies were animal trainers. I met Ma Mali, this is from Mali's, Parishra Mali's collection, who was also an animal trainer in, a, in his ancestral home at Taska, Sangri, Maharashtra. Parishra Mela Mali, uh, his grandfather had established the circus in 1897, uh, which was uh, in business till 1957. He uh, kindly took me to this place, Sikarkana, which was the animal training center during the heydays of their company. It had three enclosures, one uh, each to train, keep, and wash animals. Sometimes, uh, uh, the animal trainers uh, got uh, some of the animals from the royal menageries as gift. Uh, Bhag Bhagwan D. Rao More, another, uh, uh, he's a retired uh, DGP of police, uh, DGP, uh, DGP in railway. Uh, he told me that uh, his ancestral uh, house in uh, Sangamir also had a similar shikarkhana, which was uh, part of the Grand More Circus established by his great grandfather Yashwant Rao Gangaram More in 1881. There were around 100 wooden bullock carts, uh, carts for transportation. The whole village became a circus locale with animal traders, helpers living around. The More family still keeps the cages of lions and tig tigers as fond memory of circus. Now, coming back to the zoos. The current data collected during my field work at the Tirupati Zoo shows that 45 animals have already perished and all the tigers and tigresses are dead. Tirupati Zoo was one of the rescue centers. I argue that the very idea such as conservation need to be looked at critically so as to understand the tactful way with which we construct and release a modern humanitarian image and idea. Marte Kiri Buddington sharply notes, I quote, it is often argued that zoos are not necessarily cruel and wrong, but circuses are, by their nature, cruel. It should be noted that both our laws and the colonial laws, which we had followed, have been specious in the case of forests and animals. Besides promoting hunting as a manly sport, the colonial government had cash awards for those who killed wild animals, issued guns to interested parties, uh, levies, uh, levied tax, tax on grazing uh, for domestic animals. Please uh, bring bring to your mind the works of uh, MSS Pandian or uh, uh, or Mahesh and Rajan. Ironically enough, this is part of the forest policy, clearing uh, forests and slaughtering wild species. And this very structure here established the prevention of cruelty to animals. The major goal behind these forest policies were to promote valuable tim timber uh, as such as teak and sandalwood, collect specimens for scientific purposes, export skin and skins, teeth, nails of animals for commercial purposes. The European love of the exotic has its root in the territorial, political, racial 
and environmental and materialism, colonialism exercised in its colonies. The newfound lands and things, people and animals, which were in great demand in the native lands of the colonizer, became part and parcel of this craze. Paul Chambers throws light on how the very idea of the African elephant, Jumbo, the greatest elephant in the world, invokes this obsession that was prevalent throughout Europe to see the longest, biggest, and the most abnormal and extraordinary. The animal trade from the colonies was one of the most prosperous enterprises from the colonial empire. Like silk and spices, wild animals, each and every part of their body was being, uh, was being transported. They crossed the seas into the zoological gardens of uh, London and Paris and uh, they were being exported for uh, scientific experiments to be showcased at the zoological gardens and parks, to be stuffed in the museums of London, London and Paris. The first state-owned zoo in uh, colonial India, the Rwandaran Zoo, was modeled on the London Zoo. Philip T. Robinson observes that animal performances such as, it's very interesting, animal performances were part of the state-owned zoos, uh, such as tightrope walking, tortoise riding, elephant riding, dining chimpanzees, and motorcycle riding by the bears were regular show items in the zoos in the United States in the 19th and early 20th century. Even if, if you examine the uh, Tirundaran Zoo, it's it's interesting that uh, 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 some of uh, some, some uh, like uh, pleasure riding. Uh, or uh, 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 you know, uh, smoking uh, chimpanzee, smoking a cig uh, cigarette. Uh, th these were the, these were the items which was exhibited in the early 20th century. Ah, yeah. So, Nisha, <laughs> uh, I think we we can be here until uh, three o'clock. We should also um, make sure that we have time for for discussion. Okay. Um, so. Um, Maybe 10 minutes more and then we can have a discussion. Is that okay? Okay, maybe. Um, what we say would then not be nice to be able to discuss? What time do we have to go to? Uh, we have to be out of here at 3 o'clock. Okay. So uh, how long do I have? Uh, well, uh, it's only quite a quarter past two now. Okay. So but I think if we can leave at least half an hour for discussion, I think that would be nice. Okay, okay. I hope you agree. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll be discussing my next chapter, attending uh, uh, the circus, which is uh, uh, which is actually the uh, uh, tent always, uh, which is uh, tent is always associated with the idea of carnivalesque and the uh, and also the dangerous. I will I'll tell you a story, maybe I should wind it quickly, so I should tell a story and wind it. Uh, there was a tent master called Kerala Perton, um, who was working in the Kamala Trading Circus and many other circuses, who was really expert in his uh, 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 pitching the tents and cutting the tents, that he was sent by the owner, uh, uh, Damodaran, to China to learn the uh, cutting skills. He uh, uh, he was invited by another circus uh, personnel, another circus owner, because he was such an expert that you know uh, uh, certain skills uh, in uh, ten, uh, associated with tent need, uh, needed much expertise. For example, waterproofing. Waterproofing is a technology which uh, uh, which they adopt uh, adopted to uh, fight with the rains, where. Uh, Hot wax used to be mixed with fuel, whether petrol or kerosene, uh, in a ratio of one is to two, and th this has to be done, you know, uh, before sunrise, so that you know, the spark doesn't come and you know, uh, no accidents come up. Uh, this guy Kala Patan was uh, actually uh, trying to do that. He was uh, invited for uh, invited to do waterproofing. And uh, uh, that was exactly what he was doing. He was uh, kind of trying to mix hot wax with uh, uh, fuel. And uh, in a spark of a moment, he was burnt 
along with his favorite article, the tennis. So we who uh, may not be kind of you know able to uh, uh, we, when we hear about circus, maybe we, we always think about accidents related to performances. But this is another area which is, you know, kind of, uh, which, which needs its own expertise and skill. Uh, another interesting uh, factor I would, I would like to share is uh, uh, about, uh, about uh, uh, the language, circus lingo, something called circus lingo, which is uh, associated with tend and uh, movement and uh, you know, uh, uh, different languages. Uh, if, if you examine the colonial uh, colonial records, we can see that um, uh, colonial uh, officers uh, who were uh, traveling for tax collections, uh, uh, officers of Akari, railway, uh, forest uh, services, or uh, you know, revenue, were all, all, all making use of tents. And there were tent assistants uh, who were assisting them, uh, following them, and uh, uh, they were called as tent luskas sometimes, and uh, sometimes as tent kalasis. We can, uh, the combination is very interesting, because Balajandran had noted in his uh, work that laska, if you would remember, Amida uh laskari language, uh, where, you know, it was a uh, word associated with a deck, where many people had to, uh, many people from different parts of the world came together and had to interact uh, uh, unanimously and simultaneously to to kind of uh, work out the things in the deck on the deck. So uh, this was uh, probably the similar case with the uh, uh, circus, where you know tent pitching needed simultaneous response. And you have to trust each other, which you know, which is dangerous at the same time. If you don't respond simultaneously and uniformly, it can result in dangers. Uh, uh, this language, you can see the, the language circus people are using is a bizarre mix of languages, regional Arabic. Um, you can see regional languages: Malayalam, Tamil, um, Punjabi, you know, many of the Assamese, maybe. Arabic, English, and many other languages which I'm not able to follow. So that's an interesting factor. I mean, uh, what I've been doing in, uh, in the, the, the rest of my chapter was uh, trying to follow the tense, uh, which was uh, uh, trying to enter the circus and follow each and every part of a circus and see the spatial structure of circus that was uh, arranged maybe based on gender, hierarchy, family, and many other things, which I'm not able to speak now uh, in the short time. Maybe I should show the photographs. Uh, yeah. This is a magazine, which is, uh, uh, now this is, uh, this is my fourth chapter, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is on the trade unions, the labor struggles. This is uh, uh, a magazine published by, uh, they've stopped publishing it, uh, by the only existing circus workers union in India now, which is an all India union, uh, the uh, circus employees union, Indian circus employees union. Uh, actually, this union has uh, has uh, 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 yeah. This is this is again from their office, which is uh, they're functioning with the support of uh, INTUC International uh, Congress, and uh, but there were other unions which which were which were established uh, earlier. The first union I could find was uh, in 1955, which was uh, 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 which was a very short-lived union that, that was established in uh, Delhi. Actually, uh, uh, it was it, it actually has uh, this name: All India Service Employees Union. Actually, this union derived its name from the the the, the earlier union. Yeah. So uh, that union. Uh, uh, that is interesting. I'll show you the. That is. This is. Uh, this is the only uh, historical record I have. Uh, I managed to collect uh, this 1955 application form, which is you know kind of. I was so thrilled to find it. I mean, it was uh, such a really uh, moment, you know. Yeah. 
I never thought I can uh, yeah. kind of. It was 1955. This uh, new name was formed. Sridharan, an artist who was uh, who was behind, who was also kind of uh, trying to be part of this union, told me that uh, A.K. Gowal, and they approached A.K. Gowal in New Delhi uh, to seek their support, who was A.K. Gowal and was a uh, communist uh, leader, and uh, he is a uh, communist leader. Uh, he was in the communist ministry as well, uh, uh, <coughs> having the minister, and, um, and the first communist minister as well. So, uh, see, uh, they approached A.K. Gobal and, and uh, uh, sought their uh, uh, sought his help. He promised all the help, but uh, later on they could find that uh, the Kamala Circus owner uh, had invited him for a dinner. And when he went back, all his the car boot was filled with gifts. So that's <laughs> so they they never got their support. This is another wonderful uh, photograph. Uh, this is uh, a 1964 photograph from Agil Bharat Karmachari Sangh. Uh, Agil Bharat Karmachari Sangh, which could be translated as All India Circus Workers Union or something like that. Uh, uh, that was another union which was established with the su support of the uh, Communist Party of India. Uh, this photograph is actually a photograph of Agil Bharat Circus, which was formed by this union, which, which was uh, worked, owned, and managed by circus workers, mm -hmm. which is a momentous, which is along with the coffee houses, which came in the coffee house movement, or uh, uh, if you kind of uh, seek uh, some similar, some similarity with uh, something in the entertainment uh, industry, maybe KPAC, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a cooperative, a co uh, uh, circus. Hinterlands cooperative uh, movement has been formed. You can see Krishnaya sitting there. The interesting thing is, I when I met Krishnaya uh, 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 just a year before his death. Who is Krishnaya? Oh, Krishnaya was uh, <laughs> judge and the minister of uh, law now. Uh, yeah, law minister uh, in the first communist ministry. Yes, yeah. Yes. So Gopal was never a minister. He was never a minister. MP. He was an MP. So, uh, so it's uh, again uh, uh, Krishnaya, uh, who was actually, uh, I interviewed him when he was 99, he passed away last year or so. So, uh, he remembered about circuses and uh, everything, but he did not remember this, um, uh, you know, momentous, uh, uh, momentous, uh, what should I say? I mean, uh, incident where he inaugurated the uh, circus owned and managed by circus workers. But uh, uh, circus workers keep this memory as you know, something very precious. Uh, they, they, they have even kept the photographs very nicely. So this is uh, something which uh, I, I... What uh, happened to the circus? It, it was closed down. It was closed down after two years. Um, uh, due to uh, many pressures from the owners, and you know, they were, um, and they were not uh, able to actually manage the cooperative movement. You know, it's, it's not kind of. So this is something which, and actually, in my conclusion, I deal with uh, children. Uh, the, there's a ban of children you know, that uh, came in uh, 2011. This is a notice by. The Sarkas Karmajari Sankh, which I was talking about. Uh, children were banned in circuses, and uh, in 2011, uh, there is a there is a uh, this is from uh, uh, Kerala Circus Academy, which is uh, probably the only circus academy in India which is on its way of closing shop. You can see that. I was so friendly with these children that they wanted to take a photograph of uh, <laughs> carry dolls. 
they are from different parts of India. They were uh, they were actually brought up. It's a big issue that is uh, behind uh, formation of circus. Uh, uh, this uh, Kerala Circus Academy. This is actually being run by. Uh, though it is supposed to be state owned, it is actually being run by a circus company on Gemini Circus, who has uh, other two other circuses as well. So, what they've done is, uh, to survive the ban, they've actually adopted a method to tie with a government uh, who established uh, Kerala Circus Academy and bring only their, only children from his company and got an admission in uh, uh, Kerala Circus Academy while other others from Pune and you know kind of um, uh, other uh, circus owners from uh, Kerala itself were trying to uh, get an admission for their the children uh, was working in their companies, but they were they were denied. So this is one thing. Oh, this is uh, this is about actually to speak about the transnational history of. Circus. Which, this is something which I, which I'm planning to work on for my postdoc. I want to write a transnational history of uh, uh, circus. You know, like uh, uh, Indian circus has uh, uh, has been uh, after the animal and uh, uh, child ban. Indian circus has been uh, uh, ex exporting more and more. Uh, artists from uh, uh, America and uh, our places like Kenya, Nepal, Nepali artists have become an indispensable part of uh, uh, Indian circuses. So I want to, I want to, I want to look at this move. How the history of this move? How people have been going uh, outside and how. Uh, uh, they have been receiving me, just as I have been talking about uh, uh, Kanan Bombayo, who chose this profession, circus, to succumb, uh, to survive caste, uh, which was, uh, uh, which was, uh, survived caste probably, and became a superstar star artist, but had to face some other, uh, some other, uh, uh, other difficulties like uh, race, Maybe uh, you have ample news reports from uh, uh, Malayalam Manorama or uh, uh, Madhu Bhumi from early 20th century where, where they speak about uh, the, the caste issue faced by circus artists. One instance I remember is, is from 1903, I guess, uh, Madhu Bhumi, where it uh, talked about uh, a group of Indian artists who was working in a uh, in a white man's company, that is what that's what they say. White man's company uh, were not allowed to work to the publicity of their white owner, while the animals were allowed to perform. So that kind of so, uh, I would like to look at what is this is something which, I, which I'm planning to work for my this exchange of money. What you know, like. Uh, when the European artists came here, music, uh, technology, uh, many other things came along with them. So, this is one area. I think I'm sticking to that. Just stop it. We should go. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much, Nisha. Very, very. You have a lot of material, lot of different angles, lots of. Uh, 2,000 photographs I've collected. 2,000 photographs, mm -hmm. and also a lot of different perspective of, of, uh, of uh, the history of, of circus, I would say. Yeah, really, I'm, I'm sure that uh, I really look forward to reading it all. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. To you. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to comment or ask something? Discuss mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. about, we could talk a little more about the, the sort of gendered identity of you know the, the uh -huh. women performers. I mean, how were they? How did they see themselves? How were they viewed? Uh, you know, the, the their status within uh, you know the circus, their relationship to the owners. You know, whether 
there was any ownership, uh, you know, were women at all involved in management, ownership, you know, all of them. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I, I when I began my work, I uh, began uh, we publishing the autobiography of uh, women artists, which is published mm -hmm. in Hajjimura, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, way back in 2004, uh, where they talked about, uh, you know, how how they read circus. The first generation artist told me that they read circus out of poverty, while the second generation artist told me that. Uh, they went to circus as out of love. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, speaking about circus owners, you've already seen uh, Tara Bai, who was a circus owner from Ma Maharashtra. And the, the, there were other circus owners as well, uh, Rukma Bai Circus. And uh, uh, there was a circus uh, which was owned by a transgender, mm -hmm. Indira. <laughs> from Maharashtra? From no, from Delhi actually. So uh, these are the details, you know, uh, which uh, which which escape your writing. Uh, so uh, 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 speaking about women, so of course there were you have already seen uh, animal trainers as well. There is, if you examine gender, if you kind of uh, if you want to see what is gender, or maybe a glimpse of gender would be. Uh, I can show you this photograph, which was uh, uh, this is like, I think I have the photograph right now. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's an item called seven bar, which was uh, which is supposed to be the most difficult item in circus. Well, bar items, uh, it, it, took, it, it takes around 12 years for them to be professional in that item and uh, kind of stuff. Uh, so, uh, one of the artists who was, who was actually very proficient in this item told me that women are not taught this item. I said, why? Because women, are, uh, women do bar items in Europe in circuses and Russian circuses, or, or even in Japanese. <laughs> uh, so that's what they told me. Uh, so uh, they said, no, Indian women cannot do that. Uh, they don't learn, uh, they cannot learn bar item. Uh, but at the same time, all the other items, almost all the other items are either done in combination or you know, kind of performed by women. Uh, gender, if you kind of ask me, if you examine the spatial structure of the tent, when you, ex when you kind of uh, enter the tent, uh, you can uh, see the big, big top, which is uh, where the performances take place. When you kind of meander through the tent, you can understand that at the right you have the labor quarters, and at, uh, after that there is a quarter which is exclusively for women, and there is a guard who is appointed to uh, kind of uh, <laughs> guard the women, you know. Uh, uh, there is family on the other side, but they are not supposed to interact with men uh, who are uh, kind of... So these are all unmarried women? Th these are all un uh, mostly unmarried women, but they are called company girls. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not whether you are married or un unmarried that matters, but it's like whether are you a company girl. That means the company will be sponsoring all your expenditure. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you will also be getting oh, yeah. the salary, but at the same time, They'll be sponsoring. So, so that means they even if they're married, their spouses are not there. Uh, that, does it mean that or no? If you want your spouses, you have to move to the. Uh, uh, if you want your spouse with you, it's like you have to move to the family tents. Mm -hmm. So you well, cannot. That's a different kind of contract. Contract. Mm -hmm. Well, these circuses have kind of survived, and also uh, today. Mm -hmm. Also, is there any um, you know those trade unions you talk about mm -hmm. the unions? What is the status of those unions? <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, the trade unions actually they they function uh, uh, with the help of the union. One uh, one benefit that uh, the major benefit that happened to uh, mm. the circus workers uh, was the pension they are getting now in Kerala, which is given only by the Kerala uh, state government. Uh, 
in Maharashtra, there, there is no pension or Banga, there, there are no pension for circus workers. So that is one benefit. Uh, but of course they are able to negotiate, but, but at the same time, if you examine Congress party's uh, list of benefits, you may not find a circus union there. I mean, uh, there might be processions or strikes going on, but how many strikes do you hear about uh, circus workers? That is uh, one status, but still they are able to negotiate in a, in a way or the other, something like, uh, you know, uh, an accident happens or something like an, uh, uh, an issue of sexual exploitation happens. Though it is dealt in a very different manner, it's, it's, at least you can approach them. Um, I have uh, several questions. One, one thing is uh, who was the consumer of uh, this circus performance uh, audience? And uh, another thing is um, what actually that the service company sold that contents means. Um, I saw the very interesting pictures, but uh, the costume uh -huh. sometimes very Indian, sometimes very how to say. No, no man's costume or universal, universal kind of costume. But um, um, I think that basically that uh, such kind of circus is selling some imagination or illusion and um, to, to sell those who want to see uh, for, for consumers. So uh, basically that this, this uh, Indian circus is selling Indians or they're selling some Normans, lands, illusion, such kind of thing. Because um, I, I, I'm a cultural anthropologist from Japan, and uh, I, I'm recently I, I have very in, interest on that what is the Indianness okay. of uh, traveling around, like yoga or like other Indian cultural thing. So traveling around such kind of uh, Indian thing makes so-called Indianness. So in this Saba thing, what was Indianness and what was a, a more universalistic thing in India? Uh, if you kind of examine the, the history of uh, sir, look at the, the circus items that were being performed from early 20th century onwards, you can see that uh, you know, th th there were different types of items that was going on. And uh, uh, like uh, something which is quite which could be uh, considered as modern or maybe uh, the items like truck bar and which has English names but at the same time you have uh, 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 some, some other names like Varma Chattam which is mm. quite Malayalam which is you know a combination which is probably they developed on their own which is uh, which could be and there is also uh, items which is both uh, both mixes the both elements. Tavla trophies, for example, Tavla trophies is uh, supposed to be something which is. Uh, you have both. Like I don't know. I, I don't know how, how to speak about Indianness, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm about you. <laughs> something like that. Uh, and uh, looking at the, the the costumes. Costumes. The, uh, it is said that uh, uh, there were there were actually items like dance performances that was going on. Mm -hmm. Dance performances of classical dances, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, dance performances like the butterfly dance or, uh, you know, snake dance. Snake dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. of course. So, uh, that's one thing. And uh, the costumes, costumes uh, were, uh, a new move in costumes uh, came uh, came up with uh, uh, Kamala Damodaran when he took this uh, South Asia tour in the uh, 1950s. It, it was said that uh, you know when, when they went uh, to Singapore, uh, they did not have any chapels. <laughs> they performed without uh, shoes, without shoes, you know. So uh, the next morning they could see that uh, uh, around their tent, it was so many uh, shoes were kind of left, ah, left out. So they, they, they were kind of, you know, uh, they, they were introducing new things, high heel shoes, 
uh, makeup, lipstick. They were. Uh, he was kind of introducing cutting the hair for women to look, you know, kind of modern. Uh, yeah, modern. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, but at the same time, if you kind uh, look at what was before in Maharashtra, what I found is like in the, I have I have photos from 1920s. So 19, in the 1920s, if you kind of see, you can see women performing with full full sleeve uh, uh, dresses and you know a kind of. <laughs> but later on, you can see it's 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 not uh, you know, even for trumpets, it's not like. Yeah, I have uh, several comments. Huh? One, I think you know, I mean, some are, most of them are sufficient, but uh -huh. you could perhaps. One is, you see, I'm, I just want to alert you to some very good work on 18th and 19th centuries, uh -huh. especially 18th century. Just um, this is work using archival material of uh, from uh, from the period in Malabar, uh -huh. just before the British uh, establishes uh, established their control completely. Uh -huh. So uh, this is 18th century Malabar, and there's very good evidence now. I, have you heard of Abhilash, Abhilash Malay? You probably know him. He was a Jainu, and he's been publishing in Indian history. You might want to look at that. Mm -hmm. but, and you might want to contact him now, actually, because he has some excellent work which okay. actually Abhilash shows Malay. How, Abhilash Malay. Okay. Excellent work on how the trading community in Malabar was not as passive, politically passive as his as it is thought. Mm -hmm. How they were in, in many ways, um, in a sense, funding uh, for the local mm -hmm. uh, kings mm -hmm. and later on how they pulled the money out and you know devoted to other things and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, until the great the crash um, of 1830s, the um, merchant community, mm -hmm. the Muslim uh, merchant community in North Baba, precisely Talashi. Mm -hmm. So this is why I thought Talashi cut out. You know, it's really the active, uh, the active part. So Malay had it shows you how this community was extremely powerful in uh, maintaining relationships with the royal power. Uh -huh. And you know very well that the trading community, the traders, uh -huh. were also accompanied by the warriors. Uh -huh. The warrior community in North Kerala uh -huh. um, is believed to have accompanied caravans and so on. Changari, the word Changari comes from uh, Changaru, uh, the whole yeah. idea of Changaru. Now you you might find his work and you ask him, you can ask him if there are records and so on, uh, to see if there is if, if there is a way in, you, in which you can trace the prehistory of this community. Because in Travanco we know that Nayars, when they ceased being warriors, mm -hmm. they went back to agriculture, they went to agriculture, they had land. Mm -hmm. In sharp contrast with the Thiyas or the Iravas, who were untouchables technically mm -hmm. and could not have access to land. So, you know, where is this this movement coming from? Uh, from demobilized, is it demobilized warriors moving into surface? Mm -hmm. That would be a, something you could you might uh -huh. want to explore. Mm -hmm. And if you ask Abhilash, he might even tell you that he's he has an excellent grasp of uh, the, what is there in the archives. Mm -hmm. They might be able to tell you more about this. That's one thing. The other thing I want to ask is now you talk about, um, I mean, transnational history. Mm -hmm. Now my own work uh, in that area mm -hmm. has prompted me to look at the 20th century in terms of three periods. Mm -hmm. So the early phase is one of a kind of colonial cosmopolitanism. Mm -hmm. There's also a response to what you were asking. Mm -hmm. A colonial cosmopolitanism, because you know, we have to realize that this Indianness mm -hmm. is a very recent construct, at least for us, mm -hmm. you know, Kerala being mm -hmm. at the coast, cut off from India with mountains and forests. Mm -hmm. And we were much more connected to Southeast Asia mm -hmm. and other parts of the world through mm -hmm. the Indian Ocean trade. So there is, and, and the British this expanded geography that the sense of geography that had mm -hmm. was mapped on to the colonial uh, you know the, the colonial cosmopolitan geography mm -hmm. so people from Kerala could go to Malaya and, mm -hmm. and you know Philip Zari himself talks mm -hmm. about the connection with Malaya yes. and uh, the Malaysian yes, yes. so uh, there's a phase there's one phase mm -hmm. 
Then there is the transnational phase that comes with decolonization and now that you have to, when you move between uh, two regions, mm -hmm. you are moving between nationalities. Mm -hmm. So you, the, fa the, the whole, the question of national culture yeah. and the potential clash between national culture and the need to choose one over the other, the other becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in, in, and that's also the phase when you, know, you have the Cold War, you know, mm -hmm. and circus, for example, suddenly become, and it's, it's quite likely that at that point, it is, you know, it becomes um, amplified mm -hmm. as a feature of our cosmopolitanism, precisely because mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. I mean, USSR mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. is also, so, you know, in India's, uh, the way India was trying to position itself, Mm -hmm. uh, so, and Kerala particularly, the, the left imagination was trying to place Kerala within this kind of a cosmopolitanism of the working class and so on. Mm -hmm. Which of course, unfortunately in decolonization that gets reduced to USSR, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what happens, this kind of anti-colonial proletarian cosmopolitanism is reduced to loyalty to USSR, right? Mm -hmm. So that's there, but nevertheless, it's it's a kind of context where circus could potentially, mm -hmm. you know, be rid of its colonial connotation because, you know, the first phase could be ambiguous mm -hmm. because we know that the history of circus mm -hmm. in the West is also one of extreme orientalization. Mm -hmm. I mean, the earliest, mm -hmm. you must have, you must, you probably remember that some of the earliest Essay collections on, uh, I mean, anthologies, or yeah. essay collections on Orientalism. Um, yeah. stop, they have essays on Liti Banam, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a, as, a, as a way of turning the Orient into a spectacle, because I was noticing also in your picture of uh, that uh, the performance yeah. in Germany, Kamen. Exactly. Look at Kamen's costume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a stereotypical Orientalistic in, in costume. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, All right. and it, actually, there was a poster which was published by an American uh, mm. uh, book uh, published from America. Mm. They actually uh, enhanced this. Mm. So, this yummy, devil kind of thing. Mm. So, yes. that could be the middle phase. And the third, the last phase, of course, is the post Cold War globalization, mm. which now redefines the way in which you connect to the other, pa other parts of the world. And these three are distinct phases. Yeah. And with very distinct cultural consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have tried to look at the consequences for social life in mm -hmm. Kerala. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's very important, I think, to also look at how this would impact the AZ. Uh, because you know, the third phase is also marked by a huge technological revolution. Mm -hmm. So we very connect, and the whole notion of space itself has radically changed. Mm -hmm. So this is one, one area. Uh, one question. That's the second one, third, second point. The third point is. You know, see this connection, when we are talking about gender, you know, see this is this curious thing about circus and sports. In both these areas, Kerala has performed extremely well, and many are women, or who belong to the lower class or, or less, uh, or lower class among the Syrian Christians, you know, the, I mean, women who were relatively shielded from Brahminical values. So there, these are two arenas in which we so you, you might be interested in looking at these two simultaneously and you know that um, you know, you know say it's now sports in Kerala the, it has been quite uh, you know, there's been a lot of concern because young women have been committing suicide. Young women's mm -hmm. sports persons mm -hmm. have been killing them. In fact, last two, three years we've had four or five suicides of young girls, 18 year old, 19 year olds. Because now that the bra these Brahminical values are more and more hegemonic, uh, these girls also are under surveillance and, and, and threats and so on. So, uh, so you know, you might want to look at that. And it will also help you to connect up with some of the debates on, on, on femininity and nationalism in India. You know, the part, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, it's a Beng very Bengal-centric debate, but if in, in case you want to enter it, uh, you, you could make a paper out of it, you know, it would be good. Yeah. Then uh, fourth, the fourth point is fourth is about contract. You know this. I think the question that came up about what is the nature of the contract that is very very important. Mm -hmm. Again, if you look at cinema, you know, you to, if you look at this other institution that was growing along with mm -hmm. almost parallel to circus, mm -hmm. in cinema again you have an evolution of 
upon forms of contract. Mm -hmm. For men and women, quite different things. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, when we, and again, remember, and oh, I think very important also is not to use, uh, you know, the, uh, the grammatical template to measure, uh, you know, because you, you know, that the cinematic rep representations of uh, of a circus often show how they are like inevitably the women get raped and sexually exploited and they are displayed and you know as as the costumes for example they're worn mm -hmm. are supposed to bring them closer to to sex workers and mm -hmm. things like that those connotations those, we have to be careful in our analysis not to fall into those kind of traps mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless it might be interesting for you to look at the contract and status mm -hmm. then finally a question on the owners because i think in your whole presentation one of the things that you have told us is who the owners are, mm -hmm. where is the capital coming from, what is the political economy of circus, mm -hmm. uh, and how has it changed? Mm -hmm. So that's good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the areas, and you and I have worked on some work in the area of nomadic and uh, uh -huh. denotified tribes in, in Maharashtra. So they were criminalized by the British, uh -huh. and they are basically actual performers. Mm -hmm. So many of them actually work with animals, mm -hmm. bears. Monkeys very often, mm -hmm. and they, they men and women perform in the, on the street without uh, so there is no kind of you know that gender performance mm -hmm. difference wasn't there, mm -hmm. and they kind of travel all across. So there's a very interesting kind of feature of Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. Of course, the British kind of uh, criminalized many of them, and others were also clubbed together because they were threat to the the idea of a of a colonial nation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because they would kind of, for example, in Maharashtra, they would uh, commit a act of crime against the British and move into Nizam state, which is not, you know, like, there's no extradition in Canada between them. So it's an interesting kind of thing. The other one, uh, also the, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, cinema, for example, I mean, uh, uh, in Maharashtra, when Falke is saying Kamla Bai, you know, there's a very interesting kind of story about how they are like, as a part of theatre, you know, itinerant, they would move from, uh, have you it seen? Was, it was the, the, the theatrical performers who moved into cinema, you know, so to look at the linkages between whether Especially the these across, you know, so these street performers were, were, because these people had, you know, some traditional skills in terms of bodily, this thing and working with animals, whether it was these people in Maharashtra, for instance, who moved into the circus or, and what were the kind of linkages between these various performing yeah. uh, forms and the circus. So, so you look at caste, uh, thinking caste as a lens, you know, here there is a very other kind of ethnic identity which is being played out mm -hmm. and they were seen as, and even in Europe you would see, you know, the the yes. itinerant where, you know. In fact, the Roma. The Roma, Roma, yeah. Yeah. The Roma is not part yes, of the nomadic yes, tribes. Right. So you may want to look at that, but it's a very turbulent history. Mm -hmm. so, and very some, bloody and violent. And, oh, by the way, huh? uh, maybe you would also want to look at, have you, uh, do you have Shivaji Vendubadhyaya's collection? Yes. That, oh, um, yeah, if you come to Kerala, if you're coming to Kerala, I'll definitely give it to you. Oh. It's an excellent, excellent article by Shivaji Vendubadhyaya on the Artha Shastra, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. on how, in, how itinerant performers are identified as a threat mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. the Artha Shastra lays down uh, rules and stage in, in, and, and imagines state institutions dealing with the, these performers. Yeah, one, one, one more aspect, I, mean, I don't know whether you looked at it, I'm not familiar with it, obviously you might have. To look at the audiences. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Your audience, because, yeah. That's important because you, know, you can look at the political economy or the institution, but it's important how people are. What are they and making? Yeah. How yeah. Yeah. Sense yeah. Is, you know, for example, schools, I have gone to circus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. from the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, so you may want to look at the range of audiences, gender, age, class, kind of hierarchies, yes. class, yes. to see mm -hmm. how what sense they make of it. You know, for example, the idea of Indianness, mm -hmm. but the idea of, uh, you know, various things about that we talked about, mm -hmm. which comes more, mm -hmm. you know, you can put a lot of pressure on it by bringing the audience perception in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, that. I mean, offhand, I would feel that the, the class composition of the audience certainly has changed. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. instance, yes, of, you yes. know, yeah. It's become more and more, uh, less and less middle class, the, mm. the audience, you know, and, and maybe more, uh, in the, uh, you know, people who live in the peripheries, you know, mm. periphery, rural hinterlands. Mm. Because, I mean, I know that as a child I went to the circus, but I don't think my daughter has been or, I mean, people of my class today would not really want to go to yeah. the circus. And we went to the circus in the 70s when it was in that Soviet mm. phase, you know, mm. so they would be all these... Uh, 